everyone. So uh, in this particular video, we are going to be talking about the intraventricular tumors. So we've already covered brain tumors in general. In this, we are going to be looking at an approach to a tumor which is located intraventricularly. And then we have to, you know, what is the approach? What are the differentials? So mainly a short video dealing with the DDs of an intraventricular uh, tumor. So these are the considerations that we need to keep. Uh, all of these are the differentials. And, and I'm going to show you images and various cases and tell you the buzzwords and the important features of each of them which are going to help uh, which are going to help you differentiate them right so i'm going to start off we'll go through this list towards the end as a summary first let's run through each one of these in detail so what are we talking about? Whenever you see this sort of an illustration, whenever you see such an illustration, first of all, this is from Osborne. So that's the reference there. So here you can see from this illustration that there is this tumor which is located in the fourth ventricle, which is very, very plastic as they say it. So this can insinuate into different structures and this can go into the foramen of Lushka laterally, it can go into the lateral recesses, it can go into foramen of Magendi and go posteriorly. So this is the one which can go into various structures. So what are we talking about? This is the classic feature of an ependymoma. So ependymoma, remember, is a fourth ventricle tumor most commonly. Here, what you are going to see classically is a lesion which is predominantly heterogeneous. As you can see here on this T2-weighted uh, sagittal image that it's heterogeneous. It has the presence of these few cystic areas within it. There are a few flow voids as well coursing through the tumor. And you can also see how it is going into the spinal canal. On the axial image, this is the classic feature where you see that via the foramen of Lushka, it is going into the CP angle. So when you see this lateral spread, when you see the posterior spread into foramen of Magendi, here as well, you can see the lateral spread, the spread into this foramen of Magendi. All of these features tell us that this is likely to be an ependymoma. The closest differential for ependymoma, and we've already discussed this table as a difference in our brain tumor class, is meduloblastoma. So, meduloblastoma and ependymoma are very, very close differentials. And in a lot of uh, cases, you can't even categorically say which one is more likely. Both of them have a lot of overlapping features. Both of them are situated in the fourth ventricle. But Medulloblastoma commonly, they say, arises from the roof, so it's higher placed, has more invasion into the cerebellum. Apart from this, what you have to remember about a medulloblastoma is that it won't be so heterogeneous. So heterogeneity is something which is more common for ependymoma, whereas less common for medulloblastoma. Because it is more hypercellular, you're going to see more diffusion restriction here. So more homogeneous, more diffusion restriction, less plastic. All of these are subtle ways in which you can distinguish this from medulloblastoma. Calcification, hemorrhage, cystic changes are all more common in ependymoma, right? So these these are the tables. I'm just revising it. We have already done these differences. So talking about ependymoma further. So here are three more cases now. So before that, just a little bit of theory that I have to discuss about ependymoma. So ependymoma, as the name suggests, are arising from the ependymal outline of a ventricle. Most of these are intraventricular. So 60% are intraventricular. Uh, uh, and apart from this, 60% are also infra tentorial right so infra tentorial are far more common as compared to supra tentorial so supra tentorial are the other 40 percent out of which you're gonna have intra parenchymal spread more than intraventricular yeah so overall the most common type of ependymoma are infra tentorial intraventricular tumors supra tentorial may intraparenchymal like this example is more common than intraventricular the age group is also different the infratentorial intraventricular tumors are your young kids less than 10 years first decade of life whereas supratentorial lesions are more commonly young adults right so that is the difference but having said that Intraparenchymal type of supratentorial can be seen in young children as well, right? So this is what is uh, the brief idea. So not to confuse you more, just that intraventricular ependymomas, when I say the infratentorial ones are more common in younger kids, whereas supra 
stentorial intraventricular are more common in older patients, right? So that's the only takeaway from this. Don't get very much confused with this. So now look at the classical hallmarks here. You can see that there is a very heterogeneous mass lesion, which is having these cystic spaces. So there are cystic spaces here. You can see foci of calcification. It is also hyperdense compared to the cerebellum, indicating there might be some degree of hemorrhage as well. So it is otherwise also hyperdense without the associated hemorrhage as well. And you can see the mass effect and there is upstream hydrocephalus that it's causing. Yeah, so these are the features, multilobulated, cystic, calcification, heterogeneous. As we discussed, it is plastic and can infiltrate. And you must always do a full craniospinal axis imaging because it does have CSF spread in around 15%. This is more common in medulloblastoma, but can be seen here as well. This is a lesion which is supratentorial here. It is seen within the lateral ventricle. So almost at the location of the foramen of Monroe going into the left horn of lateral ventricle. And you can also see here associated calcification and it is hyperdense compared to the cortex. And you can see associated edema here. So there can be invasion into the adjacent parenchyma and there can be peritumoral edema as well. When it is intraparenchymal, the frequent presentation is a cyst with mural nodule. It's a very, very large heterogeneous lesion with associated calcification and you'll have your various DDs. So what are the DDs whenever you see such a lesion in a young child? So we think of a gang, we have we've studied this in detail. So you're going to think of a ganglioglioma, a gangliocytoma if you have calcification. If it's an infant, you will also consider DIG. You will also consider ATRT, something like an ATRT can mimic this. PNET, right? Supratentorial PNET will look so aggressive. You can have a glioblastoma here. You can have an anaplastic astrocytoma. So all of those becomes your DD for a supratentorial aggressive mass in a young adult, right? So this is about ependymoma and these supratentorial ependymomas tend to be your rela positive fusion ependymomas. Many other fusion ependymomas occur supratentorially. Right. So this is what we need to remember about ependymoma. This is another example where you can see this sort of a cystic lesion. So on T1, you can see it's hypointense. On T2, it is hyper intense with these multi-cystic, multi-septated sort of an appearance. And you can see how it's insinuating itself into the central canal. So such a lesion is the classic feature of an ependymoma. Right. So this is how you have to uh, look at ependymoma. Next. So this is a lesion which is actually arising from the sub ependymal lining right below the ependyma. So this is the sub ependymoma and this is the classic location in the fourth ventricle at the obex. So this particular illustration shows the classic location. Apart from this, it can also occur in the lateral ventricle where it's usually attached to the septum pellucidum or it's attached to the or it's in the anterior horn of the lateral ventricle. So, this is sub ependymoma. Sub ependymoma, in contrast to ependymoma, usually will not have edema and it will show minimal or no enhancement, right? So, this is how ependymomas appear. So, you can see this case, very unique case in which you see an, a sub ependymoma in the two classic locations where it's described. One is the obex. You know what is the obex? It's the point where nucleus gracilis is is there right so it's the lowest point of the fourth ventricle below which we have the central canal that's the obex so you have a, a lesion at the inferior part of the fourth ventricle at the obex and then you have another lesion anteriorly in the uh, lateral ventricle as well right so this is a unique case this image